when people think about John, they think about uh, that he's an original, and he introduced a new standard for spontaneity in acting that the world had never seen before, not only this country. I mean, all those French guys, the New Wave guys, they all were smitten with John. They all took it from him. He, he could really take a piece of film and play, you know, twist it and turn it and make it, you know. And he loved doing that. Yes, I think he would have edited yeah. everything forever. Forever. If possible. I mean, John's approach to making a movie, John's approach to filming, John's approach to acting, it was all so new. It was all so original. It was all so unfamiliar. Uh, and I was fighting it, you know, and I wanted to do what I was used to doing. Because during Husbands, I could kill him. You know, I, know. I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to kill him. I wanted to kill him. I didn't understand what Nally was doing. I didn't understand the picture. I didn't know what I was doing. And I started out, I tried to be polite. So I said to him, John, I just want to say this. I'd like to work with you again as an actor. But as a director, never. Do you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> never. Never use. And then I <laughs> went. I went. And uh, by the time we got done with uh, Husbands, um, I had second thoughts. And I went to John. I said, I want to play that part in that. Uh, p he said, you do? You did? Yeah. I went to him and told him. He said, what, 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 why do you want to play it? I said, John, I got to go with you again because I might have been wrong the first time. Because the first time I didn't understand a word you said. And I want to try again. And that's what led to my doing uh, Thank the influence, yeah. When I first read uh, Woman Under the Influence, then when I looked at it, I was, I was so fascinated by it. And uh, I didn't think that 50 people would come to see it, I must say. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And, and John showed it to somebody at one of the studios that he liked, just a friend of his. He said, John, who wants to see a movie about a crazy middle-aged dame? Yeah. Right. I was trying to be nice. Wacko. I like your friends. I know it. I'm a warm person. I was... In Woman, Woman Under the Influence, I don't remember, there were certainly no rehearsals. I no. never remember rehearsing one never scene. Rehearsed. Never rehearsed, no. We read. John has this big table, and we'd all sit around it and read, and then have lunch, and then read it again, and have dinner, and then read it again. Remember? Did that quite a few times. Right. And, uh, and nobody was giving a performance. You hadn't had time to really study it that well. And he wouldn't let us ever talk to each other about our character or what we thought about right. the, the way so many uh, people right. uh, study. So it was, I liked that very much because you had no idea what was going to happen. Right. Uh, it just happened, and it happened on film, whatever it was going to be. And that was, uh, I found that thrilling. You never I had no idea what was going to happen. That's so true. I remember the first day of the shooting and the first scene. And I was in a pickup truck and there were some other workers in the truck and on action I was going to drive maybe some dialogue and then we were going to turn and go up the driveway. And you know, the first day on any film, a little something, a little stomach, you know, yes. there's a little, 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 uh, little anxiety, a little nerves there. So the guy says, all right, quiet, quiet, we're going to shoot. Camera, action. Wait a minute. It's John. Wait a minute. And I look through the windshield, and he's running toward the truck. So what the hell is going on? I'm sitting there. Here's the wheel. 
and the window was open. He comes into the window, and before I knew what happened, he took a hat and he put it on my head. That working man's hat, that blue, terrific hat, that hat was so right. It, I mean, it gave me character, it gave me color, it was fantastic. And he jammed it on my head, and then he, as he was turning away from the window, he yelled, action! <laughs> <laughs> now the camera is rolling, and that's how you start. Actors, no matter what they say, they always have some plan in mind. <laughs> you know, I'll do this, I'll do that. Or they have thoughts that have to do with the scene that's coming up. The beauty part of this, him putting that hat on at the last minute, whatever plan I had was gone. <laughs> bye bye, baby. <laughs> bye bye, baby. I mean, from there on, whatever I thought was certainly immediate, immediately spontaneous. Even if it was, how do I look in this hat? Even if I'm trying to sneak a look in the mirror to see, how, whatever it is, it was real. Yeah. John has a reputation of being uh, the father of improvisation and his his pictures are improvised, this, that, and the other thing. But, but John, as much as anything, was a writer. I mean, uh, yes, he was a director. Yes, he was an actor. Probably he was a writer as much as anything. He probably wrote every day of his life. I think so. He was very happy when he was writing. And I often said to people, I could make a lot of money betting you which scenes were improvised and yeah. which scenes weren't. Because you can't tell the difference. In that scene where you broke down in, in, in Women Under the Influence, the idea that you would make all that up, that's just impossible. That was all written and it was, it was beautifully totally, written. Totally scripted. And that is the most compelling, unexpected, unpredictable uh, 10 minutes of film that I've ever seen. I've never seen acting like that, Tina. Honest to God. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. You started, and you know on John's pictures, there, was a, uh, there wasn't a sharp demarcation between when you were shooting and when you weren't shooting. And sometimes you would be shooting, you didn't even know it yet. Somebody would say, hey, we're shooting. Oh, we are? Oh, okay. And I, I didn't know we had started. And I was off camera. Yes, I, I was off camera. At you. And you were, you were over by the fireplace. And you started. And I couldn't believe it. Jerry, <laughs> <laughs> you really thought I was gone? Yeah, I geez, I couldn't believe it. It was fantastic. It was well, that just... was that was the thing John did for us, by starting at the beginning, going to the next scene. Going, instead of having to do as you usually do, you have to start in whatever location is, and shoot all the things in that location. There, and it can easily be the end or the middle or the, this. But it was easy by that time. We were into it. I mean, it was it was a living thing, because we started at the beginning, went to the seconds, went to the third, right. and it just began. But we, to emotionally we, there we take never. Us. But there was nothing in that movie up until that point that had that kind of power. It scared Nick. Nick. Oh yeah. It scared him so. Oh yeah. I mean, at the end of it, when he realized, holy Christ, what's happening here? I love you. I'll lay down on a railroad track for you. If I made a mistake, which I did, I'm sorry, but so what? What's the difference? I love you. Now relax. Come back to me. Nick. Relax and come back to me. Nick. Nick. Get out of here. Get out of here. You're going to watch that scene of this lady here. Uh, it is going to get you. I don't care. A hundred years from now, it will always be powerful. Great scene. Great acting. A man caught between two women, oh, his mother, as you were. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a new story, but yeah. it's a powerful story. Yeah. Mothers have such a strong, strong hold on it. 
And Catherine was wonderful, oh, wasn't she? Catherine. Catherine, that's John's mother. Yeah. She played uh, my mother in the, in the film. Part call for a strong lady. And in life, she was a strong, strong lady. She would improvise. She'd throw in lines. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She oh. was a quick New Yorker. You had to watch her like a hawk. She was a New Yorker, and she, 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 she was a big scene stealer. <laughs> but she really was quick. She had that yeah. real New York quickness, and it was wonderful. Yeah. And uh, then with my mother being kind of ladylike, so they were I great did. foils for each other. Well, this was really a love story. Was it? It was a love story. It certainly was. If we're talking about Nick, you're talking about an Italian guy who works in the construction. His father was a construction guy. This is not a guy that went to college, and there's a right way and a wrong way, and this is how you do it, and that's how he was brought up. But the fact is, he had a streak, something in him that made him attracted to to Mabel, and Mabel was not mainstream, and Mabel was not down the middle. Mabel was a little, I mean, she was a little bit off. It was the fact that she wasn't mainstream, the fact that she had this eccentric side to her, that's what appealed to Nick. But it was that kind of thing that made Nick complicated, ambiguous. And that's what I loved about him. I loved everything about him. I thought it was so heroic, his, his fighting for his wife and being squeezed terribly by a very, very powerful Italian mother. Yes. And the things she was saying were true. It was just confusing. You couldn't, you couldn't say, no, that's not true, Mom. She's not like that. She, yes, she was like that. One of the things that John was very good at doing was trying to capture something about real people and real life. And, and, and one of the things that, you know, in most movies then and even uh, probably now, the movies deal with there's a good guy and there's a bad guy. And this is the guy you're going to root for and this is the guy you're going to root against. Ambiguity is not something that is very popular in movies. And, and with a character like Nick, you have a character that's neither good nor bad. He has good things and he's got bad things. When you guys went to New York and you screened the film, for the film festival in Lincoln Center. I wasn't there. Why? I think I was probably shooting. So John called me. I said, John, how did it go? He said, they booed you. I said, what? <laughs> he said, when your name came up at the end of the picture, boo. <laughs> I said, what? What did I do? What did I do? And he explained that was the beginning of the, the women's movement. That was the beginning of women's rights. And naturally, they, they, you know, they were rooting for the woman. I know that people who have seen it later than when we first um, distributed it have much more understanding of your character now. Oh, really? Mm hmm Oh, yeah? Um, but, you know, every few years it changes. I'm looking at it from a parochial point of view, that is, from my character's point of view, from Nick's point of view. If that phone is ringing, the chances are it's my mother, and that I don't answer it. <laughs> That is a big breakthrough. So that uh, I, uh, my appreciation of my wife and what we have together 
is much more meaningful now as a result of this experience. So we'll let her wait and I'll call her tomorrow. I think it's optimistic, yes. I do too. I remember <laughs> I remember how we first distributed or started to distribute this. We we offered it to the existing distribution companies and they all said, No way. And I said, John, how are we going to uh how are we going to get it into the theaters? He said, I'll tell you, he said, let's go down to the all night um, newsstand. I said, okay. And I said, then we got right there. And I said, now how, now what? He said, let's get papers from all the Chicago, San Francisco, wherever we want to play. And he said, then we'll look in the theater section and we'll see where a movie we like is playing. <laughs> he said, and then I'll call him up. He said, they'll take my call, if only to say, I told John Cassavetes to go take a flying leap. <laughs> so that's what he did. And they did. And if, I mean, it was on a very small plane until the uh, New York Festival. We were fully prepared for people not to like it, as we always were fully prepared. They went crazy. They loved it. They just loved it. It's so unexpected. I mean, when you don't expect love to receive it, it's it's so touching. And they just, they just, oh, Peter, I wish you'd been there. It was one of the most wonderful nights of my life, artistically, and the feeling between the audience right. and that. And then, what, Walter Reed took it on? Yeah, that's right. And it yeah. did very well. 